everybody it's your favorite auntie mo and we are back for another episode review of black ink crew comps and this is season one episode three opening up before we get into it if you have not done so just yet go ahead and subscribe to my channel it's so doggone simple at this point i don't know what you waiting on matter of fact let's go ahead and pause so you can do that right now look at the bottom right down there you see that big red it says subscribe Go ahead, click on that subscribe, right? And then you see a little thing that pop up right there with the little bells? Hit all. You see. Boom! There you go. That's all you have to do. All right? Now, let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or thumbs down and then hit the notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content. That's the little bell that you just hit. Make sure you hit that doggone bell. If you didn't hit it, go on back and hit it. All right? Now, y'all, this episode of Black Ink Crew Compton was good. I liked it because it was not a whole lot of drama in it. There was some sad parts to it, but it wasn't no drama in it. It was it was a lot of positivity, and I liked that. I liked to see the black folks coming together and, and supporting each other, and I liked it. I hope you guys are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all, so the episode starts off. KP and um Tim, they're at the radio station, and they're promoting the shop because, you know, the shop getting ready to open. They ready to get out that show Compton what they working with. Ink, art, music. I am Compton. They ready to get it popping or whatever, right? Now, in the meantime, Lemire is at the park, right? Now, he trying to do something special for Danielle because y'all remember last episode, Danielle showed up at the beach and showed her big pregnant ass. After the fool for no doggone reason, and her and him got into an argument, embarrassing the both of themselves out there in the public on the beach, what was supposed to be on some team building stuff, but she came out there on some old jealous girlfriend stuff. So he like, you know what? I know she upset. So let me do something special for her to make her feel special. Child, she gets to the park. She come walking up, sliding her feet in some old nasty-ass slides. She came up with a stank-ass attitude and was like, Ladies, let me tell you right here, because I'm a woman, I can tell you, when we make this face right here, that's an ugly-ass face. That's an ugly-ass face. Don't do that. Don't do that man like that. But she make this ugly-ass face. It's like, what is up? What you got me here for? With that damn voice of hers. Ooh. So he tried to be cute and fun or whatever. He put the little, ooh, why is my hair sticking up right there? Y'all just don't know the hardship it is with my hair. In Texas, with this long, thick hair, ooh, ooh, even the ponytails is too damn hot. Lord, I'm getting off track. Lord, help me. Um, He tried to be all cute and fun and flirty, and so he grabbed her by her hand, and he put a little blindfold on or whatever, and he reached out and kissed. She's like, ew, nigga, stop. She's got this stank attitude for what? For, you know you know what? Because she big, she pregnant, she tired, and she probably hot because she on a damn jean jacket. And the sun was out. And it didn't look like it was cold out there. So she, she probably had a lot going on that day. Anyways, so he walks over to where the picnic is. He sits her down. He takes the blindfold off. And he like, surprise. And she, again, just because you made a little funk ass picnic ain't gonna make up for the reason that she was hiding bitches he was like hiding females i wasn't girl he wasn't hiding nobody she getting on my nerves y'all danielle this is the third episode in and danielle is getting on my nerves she's steady pissed because she feel like lemire was hiding nessie from the shop he told her look here kp was looking for some new artists She's somebody I knew from back in the gap. I brought on into the shop. That was it. And he ain't messed around with that damn girl. So he like, look here. I apologize. I will never disrespect you. I will never put you in any kind of feelings to make you feel like anything is going on. She then does apologize because she says, I realized that I was out of line. I shouldn't have came up there ready to turn up. And my apologies, which was good. I was proud of that yelling that moment. She apologized, love. But then this boy in the mirror, this boy proceeds to post some good ass whipped cream on her feet and starts sucking on her toes in the middle of the park. Lord, now look, don't get me wrong. I love a good toe sucking, okay? My man love my feet, okay? But that's fresh up out the shower. With the bath and body works and the cocoa butter and the shea butter. That's when they clean. I got 10 good chicken fingers right here for you. But 
First of all, she walked up there and she was sliding her feet. I'm sure her toes done touched that ground. How are you just gonna put the feet in your mouth like that? We don't know what the hell is on that ground like that. Don't you know all the kind of disease and shit out here? And you just gonna put them toes in your mouth like that? Boy. Next, y'all, we got Voodoo Doll and Ink Dripping. So Voodoo Doll and Ink Dripping are supposed to meet up and have some drinks or whatever, right? She sends him a text where to meet her at. He shows up there and he like, oh, I think I'm at the wrong spot. This shit look, you know, ain't no more signs out here. What is it supposed to be? He go up in there, child, it's a whole s and bar. They got people whipping each other on, on the stage and bondage and whips and chains and swings and handcuffs and all. I was like, what in the hell is going on up in chill? It looked like all kind of what in the hell is going on up. But you know what? I'm not, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. I was interested. I would like to see. Just, you know, research purposes. You know, I'm asking for a friend. A friend named Auntie Mo. So they get to sitting down, having some drinks. So he talking to her. He like, you know, so what? what was up with you? What happened with you? the other day at the beach because as you remember once you know after danielle and lamir got into it whatever she left tim sprayed her in the face with the water gun whatever right and so lamir is just like you know what happened to you 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 went from zero to 100 and you stormed up out of there and didn't nobody know what was going on so once again we get into her storyline about this cult, right? She tells him she used to be in a cult. Her stepfather was the leader of the cult. She starts to get a little bit more into detail about it. She says that they could only eat once a day. He was very um, mentally abusive to her, verbally, and then it started to become physically abusive. And he's trying to explain to her that he doesn't think that Tim meant to be derogatory towards you know towards her in any kind of way because she says that you know she kind of has ptsd whenever she sees a man being disrespectful to a woman or you know downgrading her in any kind of way that's like a trigger for her and she felt at that moment that's what tim and lemire and you know everybody else for well, all the other men there were doing at that point and that's why she got upset and she left and so after her you know explaining that he was able to understand her a lot more and she does apologize you know he tells her that he wants her to come back to the shop shop is supposed to be open up in a couple of days you know you post to the team you supposed to be a part of the team and the family like we need you there she's still you know kind of undecided whether or not she wants to go back so they chop it up from there whoop de woo then she's like i got something i want to show you child she take him into the one of her little private room one of her little electro abundance <laughs> private room she got in the back takes him back there proceeds to I guess bond him up start whooping his ass or something i don't know i heard some smacking i heard him saying ouch so child let me find out okay mm, that's i'm just curious you know I, 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 you know anybody knows about one of them texts let me know you know what i'm saying research purposes Y'all, so everybody over there at the new shop, right, ever, you know, it's still under construction. But they over there, they talking about the placement of, you know, where KP is going to be, where Tim is going to be. Now, Tim, we're going to get on Tim in a minute. We're going to get on Tim in a minute. But, you know, they're just basically talking about the placement where everybody should be. And so, Lemire is getting kind of irritated by that. He's like, look here, the shop supposed to be open up in a couple of days. Why are y'all just now trying to decide who going to sit where and what going to do what and what going to do what. So they just chopping it up about that. Next thing you know, ink dripping, he comes walking in. He got a bouquet of flowers with him. And so, you know, everybody's like, oh, who you got flowers for? You got flowers from somebody? He's like, no, nah, these flowers are for Erica. Everybody's like, who the hell is Erica? Here come Barbie. Oh, they use my government name? Erica, girl. I can't call you Barbie no more. Your name Erica, girl. <laughs> Let me stop. That's rude. She won't go by Erica. Her mama named Erica. I'm going to call you Erica. Speaking of which, the flowers, she got a little card on there. And the card was like, um, to my beautiful girl, I miss you and I can't wait to see you. Love, mom. That instantly set off a trigger in her. Everybody was like, oh, that's so sweet. That's from your mama. She's like, no, nah, that ain't sweet. I don't mess with that woman. I hate her. We hate each other. She got mad, threw the flowers in the vase, crushed them, and walked out. Everybody like, what the hell just happened? So Lemire and Danielle, they're on their way. No, they're at the doctor's office, you know, for the regular checkup of the baby. Lemire is so cute, y'all. He's so super excited about being a dad. Of course, he hopes that he has a son. He wants to name his son after his brother. And he's just showing pictures of the sonogram and all that. It's just, it's just so dope to see dads get so excited about 
when they have the arrival of a new baby coming because us as women of course we're excited but we go through everything we go through everything so to have a man right there by you every step of the way going through stuff with you and him to be just as excited it's a dope thing so anyways they get to the doctor and they're going over some blood work blood work results some of the blood work came back saying that it's a possibility that their child may come out with spina bifida and that is a deformity of the lower part of the spine which most commonly is going to cause birth defects meaning that they're not going to be able to walk it's going to be a long time disability like there there is no cure for spina bifida and so her OB wants to refer her to a high risk specialist OB that can do some further testing. Basically, they're gonna do some more blood tests. If that comes back positive as well, showing it, they'll do like, um, they'll get some fluid from the amniotic sac and do some testing from there just to basically further confirm it. And so depending on what the results say, the doctor's like, you know, you, you all have options. If you are considering, you know, terminating the pregnancy, you do have that option. I would think depending on how far along she is, because with states and laws and all that, cha, it's crazy. I used to work for Planned Parenthood, so I already know how the government likes to I'm not even gonna don't let's you know what I'm not even gonna go there because not even supposed to be political on YouTube but let's just say she is pro-choice okay but um she, you know like I said depending on how far along she is she might have the option to do that but you know she just they have something to, to to think about because that's heartbreaking that is very heartbreaking I have a big family history of illnesses and diseases and things like that and so having been in her shoes where you have to worry about okay i gotta get further testing to make sure this is this and this is this that's scary i've been in her shoes and that is super 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 scary so i'm hoping that everything works out for them but, but they just kind of sitting there looking at the doctor they look stunned like they don't know what to say and like i said i've i've been there i know how scared she is so shout out to lamir and danielle i don't say this lightly i mean this if y'all ever watch this, anybody that know them, tell them, Auntie Mo is praying for you. Because I've been there, Auntie Mo praying for you. Next up, y'all, we got Barbie and Nessie. They're out having some drinks. Well, before they have drinks, they're out putting flyers on people's cars, all up over the neighborhood, everywhere, letting everybody know that I, um, I am Compton. Ink Art Music is about to open up. So they stop, they have some drinks. And so Nessie asked her, like, is she okay from everything that happened the other day when they were in the shop and when she threw them damn flowers and nobody would know what the hell was going on. So she tells her that, you know, her and her mother are basically enemies. They hate each other. They do not like each other. She said her mother gave her up when she was nine months old to her father and to her grandparents. Her grandparents legally adopted her because they were afraid that her mother would try to come back and take her away, and they didn't want that to happen. She said she has never had a relationship with her mother, that whenever they do talk, they end up arguing, and her mother calls her all kinds of names. I'm sure y'all probably calling each other names, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But she says her mother calls her all out of her names and she just has no relationship with her. She has no respect for her, no none of that with her. So for her to send her those flowers when she hasn't talked to her in years, like, what are you trying to do? She doesn't know if she's trying to be cool with her because she heard that this new, you know, shop is opening. So she wants something from her. She doesn't know what it is, but she's like, I don't know why this woman is trying to reach out to me now. So in um, Barbie's green screen, Erica, <laughs> in her green screen, you know, she's crying because she's upset. I've, I, I can't imagine what she's going through to, as a woman, for your mama to, to be that way. Like, that's crazy, you know. Obviously, her mother, she said her mother was addicted to drugs. She had a lot of issues going on. So she had her own battles and her own struggles that she was dealing with. So I'm sure her mother had her own reasons for living the life that she chose to live and for her not being a part of it that's neither here nor there that ain't for no goddamn bite of the judge but the producers ask her you know do you want to reach out to your mother are you interested to reach out to your mother she said no with the quickness before they could even get the last sentence out of their mouth hell no that's got to be some pain behind that and and I don't know. Hopefully things can work out with her and her mother, however that situation goes. That's got to be a hard thing to deal with y'all. Moving on from that. Y'all, so AP comes back to the shop. Everybody there chilling, trying to do the construction, getting everything going for the shop, right? Side note, y'all forgive me if y'all hear that humming in the background. That is my dryer. Hopefully the background music <laughs> will drown it out if you don't hear it. But everybody's over there chilling. KP come in looking like a sad-ass puppy. They're like, what's wrong with you, my dude? 
Well, City Hall done put the red tape on a construction for the doggone shop. Come to find out, this fool Lemire, no, not Lemire, this fool KP, forgot to submit the permits for the fire, the plumbing, the electrical, and something else or another. Lemire is pissed. Lemire is like, why are you trying to do everything yourself? You got a team. How come you can't reach out to people and ask people for help? Lemire is trying to tell him, I got a dude that can get all that done for you. Because, you know, of course, Lemire got his own business. Hello. KP is telling him, dog, like, this ain't no ice cream truck. This is bigger than this. This is a tattoo shop. True that. But let's keep it 1,000 out of all y'all here. Lemire the only one that's an actual owner of a shop. I'm just saying. If you're going to ask anybody for some help and some advice, I would think you're going to ask somebody who actually owns a business. I don't know. That's what I would do. I'm just saying, no. So everybody's trying to suggest something to him, and KP is just shooting it down. Pew, 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 left and right. He don't want to do with it. He's basically trying to do everything on his own, and he's not reaching out to nobody. But then again, you... You missing stuff that you're trying to get accomplished, bruh. That's what your team, your team is trying to tell you. Like, reach out and get some doggone help. Lemire gets pissed. He's like, look here. When y'all decide y'all want to get this thing done, and y'all come back and holler at me. Because his mind is elsewhere. He's got other things worried about. Like, his unborn child and what birth defects he or she could or could not have. He ain't got time to be dealing with this old stupid stuff that y'all should have did a long that time ago. When y'all supposed to be opened up in five days. Get the hell on up out of here. So I don't blame Lemire. In that moment, I don't blame him. Like, I got some real stuff going on. Yeah, this is real stuff too, but this is totally different. So he gets pissed and he walks out. And I don't even blame him in that moment. Like, dog, why is we just now, in five days, trying to get all of this stuff together? That don't make no damn sense. Y'all, that, that irritated me. Y'all, real quick, um, KP does a tattoo on some dude named Yellow Breezy. It just said triple triple blessed on his wrist right here triple blessed I mean how can you judge some letters the letters look nice triple blessed triple blessed by the father the son and the holy spirit I ain't mad at you my easy hey everybody chilling at the shop they waiting on Barbara to get back they everybody biting their fingernails they don't know what the hell is going on they thinking, man, she got all that hype. She ain't, because this, Barbie said she got some people down at City Hall, and she going to get the dog on permits. It's going to take a woman to get the job done. And that's exactly what she does. She came in after sitting, having them fools, waiting for forever. Lo and behold, she got the permits. Everybody's happy. Life is good. All right, y'all. So it's the opening night of the, the tattoo shop, and everybody there, the whole block is there. The whole neighborhood is there, and it's dope y'all okay they got a little hype man little hype dude on the microphone he out there getting everybody lit turned up everybody dancing and they singing and they drinking and they smoking legal weed and they having a good old funky good time it was beautiful it was damn so beautiful and they outside because kp and barbie don't want nobody to go inside just yet they try to keep the inside a secret or whatever right so next thing you know, Lil Easy E show up. We want Easy. Easy E son show up. You know he is Junior Compton because Easy E was Compton. So he shows up to show him love and all to I am Compton. And it was cute. You know, he gone show him some love to the homies and the locs and the hoods and, and all of that. It was cute. All right, y'all. So finally, everybody goes in the shop and it is nice in there. It's lots of color, lots of space. It is really dope in there. They have a part um, where they, it's like a little art studio. They have another part that's going to be a music studio. And then they have another part where they do their tattooing that. So it's dope. It's literally art, ink, music. It's, it's amazing. It's really beautiful, right? So Nessie and Lemire are talking, oh, side note, Voodoo Doll shows up. Glad C showed up, Voodoo Doll. So Nessie and Lemire are talking or whatever, right? And so Lemire is talking cash money. I mean cash money about KP. Like he shouldn't be doing this and he didn't do this and he didn't do this right and he need this and he need that. Meanwhile, Tim over here on the side, ear hustling hard he's circling around back and forth just pacing ear hustling hard now you could see nessie could see tim was ear hustling because she was trying to watch what she was saying in response to lemire talking crap about kp she was kind of like yeah but i mean i you know like 
she, I don't know if she was trying to kind of give him a hint like, bro, watch what you're saying. Bro, Tim right there. Tim is like, I don't know if I trust this dude, Lemire. Now, time out. Pause for the cause. I don't know if I like Tim. Tim is giving me very much so Teddy vibes. You remember how whatever beef Caesar had, Teddy had, whatever fight Caesar had, Teddy had, Teddy was like his bodyguard, basically. He gonna take the bullet, he gonna take the punch, he gonna take the kick to the nuts, the pie in the face, the piss in the eye. Teddy was gonna take all of that. That's what Tim is. Tim is Teddy. Teddy is Tim. Tim is Teddy, okay? Because he was just kind of like, just, just I, 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 y'all. He gonna be a problem. Tim gonna be a problem. And like I said, the reason why I say this is because Teddy, in my opinion, this is my opinion. Don't nobody come in my comments with that bull crap because I don't want to hear you. Don't come in there with it. To me, Teddy was a yes man of Caesar. He was a yes man of Caesar, regardless if Caesar was right, wrong, or indifferent. Teddy was his yes man, and he was going to tell him, yes, you did that right. Yes, you should have pissed in her poison and shit in her house. Yeah, you was right for punching that baby in her throat. Yes, you was right for that. You was right for spitting that old lady out. Like, whatever, whether it was wrong or right, Teddy was going to agree with him. Now, Tim is giving me straight up Teddy vibes. That's just my opinion. We going to move on from that. Oh, and then um, KP was on stage rapping a song. Tim Teddy right there. When uh, KP stood up and he was like thanking everybody for being there, Tim Teddy basically took over that. And was like, yeah, this man right here, this man right here, dude, he did this and I wouldn't be who I am. I get KP, I hope you pissed by yourself. Because that boy is right there the whole time, ready to hold it and shake it or whatever else you need him to do. Yes, sir, master, I will do it. That's just the vibes he's given. Now, that could be his job, and I could be completely out of line, and I need to shut my damn mouth. If that's the case, and lastly, y'all, it ended with Lemire and Danielle. They're on their way to go see the specialist, and they've decided, regardless of what the tests say, they are going to continue on with the pregnancy. This is what God has in store for them, so they're going to take it, and they're going to roll with it, and they're going to love that baby regardless because they said that that baby is a legacy, and I'm proud of them. For that because she looked like she was way far along too that would have been even more devastating to terminate a pregnancy when you have already built that sort of bond but he they were talking about names and I think she was saying if it was a girl she wanted to be like summer angel or summer miracle or something like that he was saying if it's a boy he wants him to be named Kevin because that was the name of his brother that passed away in a motorcycle accident and it was weird he said that um when his brother got into the accident, first the doctor said that they were working on his leg. There was a problem with his leg. Later on, they came out and said that he died from complications to the wreck. So I don't know how that's related, in what kind of way, but he ended up passing away. Y'all, when he broke down in that car, I started crying. It's something when you see a manly man just break down and cry. You're like, oh, papi, no, don't cry. Oh, don't cry. But y'all, the episode ended from there. This episode was good. Like I said, if you was looking for a whole lot of drama, I'm sorry I don't have it for you this review. Next review will definitely be some drama. Because I already see. <laughs> it's going to be some juju with that. But y'all, hopefully y'all enjoyed this review. Let me know what y'all think about it. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And auntie, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.